Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, we're going to be continuing with the RPG systems tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be doing a bit more refactoring and moving around the item system that we created in the past so that we can reuse it for the NPCs. Ideally, we'll have an inventory script on the player storing the inventory and an inventory script on an NPC. And the code should be the exact same because they do the exact same job. Only we interact with them differently. For example, um, the UI listens, well, not listens, but represents the player's inventory. So ideally, the inventory slots will um, have reference to the player's inventory. Now, one way we could do this is each slot we could drag in the player to get their inventory component, and then when we press play, obviously it's representing the player, which would technically allow us, if we wanted to do so, to easily just reference a different um, a different entity's inventory, right? If we had like an enemy or an NPC, we could represent their in, uh, inventory on our UI. But we want to keep it for the player. Um, as far as the UI, it should just know there's an item container and I want to represent a particular slot from it. And then obviously, if for example, the slot it's trying to represent has no item, we'll just disable the UI for that slot. So it's very similar to what we have currently, but obviously I've been like prototyping this in my own time in a separate project and I've been fiddling around finding what works best. And I think the way I'm going to show you now is what works best. And this allows us to then obviously chuck on an inventory script to the player saying these are your items, chuck on an inventory script to the NPC saying these are your items, and then when they interact we can obviously pop up a window for both and then make it be like, for example, either having a buy and a sell tab, so when you press the buy tab you see the NPC's inventory and when you press sell you see your own, and then if you're in the sell tab and you click on your items you you know sell them or buy if you're on the NPC's. The UI design can come later, but now we want to get the stuff under the hood working. Um, yeah, let's get into it. But of course, before I start, I've got to thank my patrons. So special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Boudere, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link is down below to my Patreon page. Otherwise, the links are also below to my Twitter, uh, Discord, Twitch. Any following and support on there would be greatly appreciated too. But apart from that, let's get into the video. So last video we got it so that the player can essentially walk up to the interactable loot. They have nothing in their inventory, and when they press E, they now have the item in their inventory. Okay, and then there it is, you got three of it. We can drag it around, we can put it on the hotbar, you can reference it in multiple places. Obviously, as I'm doing all this stuff, the camera's moving around and usually you don't want that to. That's we'll worry about the input later. We can still walk around and stuff. Maybe you want to do that, maybe you don't. Um we'll look into state machines later for what you can do when. Um for now, I'm happy with this though. We can reference the things, we can take them off, and we can destroy them just like we've done already. But what we want is we want to keep the same functionality that we did last video, but refactor it to be smarter. So currently, the player has the inventory behavior, which references an inventory. And this works. But what I'd rather want to do is I want to go put the logic back into this um, inventory script. We'll just make it a mono behavior for the inventory. And Essentially, that means that we can then make an NPC and just chuck on the inventory script and the slots just need to reference the player's instance. So before we do any um, other thing, if we go look at the inventory slots, they have a listener for the inventory updating and then they update, right? They update based on the player's inventory. But because this is a scriptable object and we're going to be using a mono behavior instance, we need to drag it in the inspector. So it's up to you to remember to do that, right? If you forget, then the inventory slots aren't going to work. Um, because you might have varying sizes, like varying number of slots and stuff like that, what you might want to do is you might want to make a root kind of inventory UI script, have that know about the player's inventory, and then listen for the event on there. So you only have one listener rather than, you know, 20. And then when it listens for it, it loops over the children telling them all to update. That's probably the way I'm going to do it, and I think it makes the most sense. Um, I'll just I'll just get it working without that first. I'll manually just set them up by you know shift selecting and dragging them in. But what it allows us to do is if you want to during your game, for example, uh, I don't know, take over another enemy. Let's say you possess an enemy and you want to display their items and their abilities on your hotbar and stuff. Then obviously you might want to do that. Um, but for now we're just going to we're just going to do it by shift selecting all the slots and dragging in the player. So let's get into the code now. Okay, so one thing I want to do, which is just a person, personal like uh, neatness thing, I don't like having this warning and having to fix, like adding all these things into our struct for the item slot. So rather than that, I'm just going to take out these operators and just manually in the inventory, it's like one place. Instead of saying equals equals, I'd say dot equals and pass that in and it'll do the exact same job. Uh, so now we don't get that like warning in the struct. 
Also, at some point, we're probably going to change this to be a class and we're going to add more data in here. Because, for example, let's say you're playing Minecraft. Everyone's playing Minecraft. Your items uh, have durabilities, right? So you might have an iron sword and someone else might have an iron sword. But both those iron swords are different. They won't stack together because, you know, probably you'll have set the max stack for a sword to be one. But also because they actually aren't the same item anymore, you know. They have the same item base, like they have the same base name and... Um, durability base like max or whatever but but obviously the item has a different durability so what we need to do is uh, we need to make kind of like a component thing for the items right so you have an item base but on top of that you can have a list of components so that might be durability or it might be enchantments right maybe you enchant your sword well that's different from a sword that is the same type but isn't enchanted so they won't stack and stuff like that so we're gonna have to tweak that but that's not today's video that's for later on all we want to do here is go to the um, inventory and we're going to leave all the logic in there. So I'm actually going to delete this class, the inventory behavior. So let's just well delete the inventory behavior, I guess. And make the inventory a mono behavior. I have shifted this around twice now, but I'm not going to be shifting around again. I've finally settled on what I want to do. We don't need to have the scriptable object maker. It's still an item container. All the code's happy. Um, we have the event for on inventory items updated. Now, maybe you actually want to make this a, not a void event, but like a unity event, because something might happen, for example, when the NPC's inventory updates, and you don't want to have to make an on NPC. So the problem is void events here are like single instances. Usually you want to use these for the player, right? Just like the player's inventory updated, because only one player. But for enemies, there's tons. So you don't you don't have to make a new scriptable object event for every single enemy. It'd be stupid. It wouldn't work really. So what we want to do is we want to just use here a unity event. Okay, a unity event. Um, and sadly, that means we have to go through and basically just change this to say dot invoke instead of dot raise. So this will take like two seconds. Okay, that's done. Uh, all the code still works the same, right? We just want to say, instead of having a set size function, we're just going to call this start. And uh, we're going to tell at the start just to have a private int size equals 20 by default. And we're just going to say I'm slots equals a new I'm slot array with size. Okay. So we've not really done much there. Just get rid of the custom events and let that compile. We might have to reassign the script to the player, but the player is the only thing of the inventory. So we're just going to say, you know, add an inventory. On inventory items updated, we want to go into our assets and find like uh, game event underscore on inventory items updated, right? Maybe you want to call that on player uh, items updated. And then in here, we call void event raise, okay? So that's just like the same as calling raise in our code, but because we're using a unity event, we're allowed in the inspector to do other things instead. So for the NPCs, we won't pass in a, you know, scriptable object event. We're just going to update something on their object or whatever, right? Or maybe we'll have an event, but it'll be a different event. So, you know, uh, 20 for the inventory size. We want to just quickly go into the prefab and, you know, fix the prefab. So we're going to remove that broken script and then just say apply and everything's happy now. Everything's happy apart from the slots, okay? They all want to know about an inventory. Now, I don't actually know what that's linked to. It, I think it's broken essentially. Inventory underscore player inventory, right? It's referencing a scriptable object that doesn't exist anymore. If we go to game data, this is broken. Let's delete it. And now you'll see all the slots aren't happy. They're all missing. So just for the sake of testing, let's quickly shift select all our slots and just drag in the player to the inventory field. Okay. So now slots listen for the player inventory. It's, it's bold because um, this isn't saved to the prefab and we can't save it to the prefab because the player won't isn't guaranteed to exist in every scene. We're going to make him exist in all the scenes, but he isn't guaranteed. The code doesn't know that. The inspector doesn't know. Um, that's why I said we should have one root object where we just set it in one place rather than setting it in all these different places. But for the sake of testing, we'll just say, yep, yeah, let's press play and see what happens, right? Uh, let's get rid of the warnings. Okay, so if we walk over to the inventory, our inventory is currently empty. We interact, and now our uh, inventory stuff's there. But this is all stored on the player's instance, right? Rather than the scriptable object. This is actually good because if we had a save system, we don't want to save stuff that scriptable objects. Because even though you can, okay, some things you might want to save like settings. They don't. They shouldn't exist in the scene, right? But 
the problem with like the inventory is you want to save NPCs inventories as well, right? Like if you have an NPC that you buy items from, ideally, once you bought items from them, you, you should save the fact you've bought those items. They should be removed from their inventory, just like your inventory is saved as well. So when going between scenes or when interacting with like save points or, you know, checkpoints or NPCs that save the game, you want to essentially loop over everything in the scene that is savable, that has like maybe an interface I savable when we would do that and just tell it to save. And then what we can do is most games for save files will just have one file will all, with all their save data just chucked into that save file in like a dictionary or something. In the past, I've basically done like each slot has its own file. But the thing is opening and closing files um, through like even just code, it, it's a fast, but it's it's slow relative to everything else, right? You'll take, if you have a big game with tons of stuff in the scene you're saving and loading, it can take a long time. I've noticed looking through my app data that other games that are made in Unity usually have like a single file holding all the save data in rather than having loads of separate files all over the place for different things. Like I don't want to basically say, all right, slot one, go find the file that's representing slot one. You know, I want to say inventory, go get the inventory slots. It would be much more efficient and it's probably faster to open one file with tons of data than tons of files with bits of data because you open, close, open, close, open, close, right? You'd just rather open one file and just chuck all the data in. Um, but yeah, we're going to get to saving later. Um, it's not that hard, actually. It's hard. It's easier than I thought it was back in the day when I first tried implementing it. But yeah, we're getting some errors here, and that's just for the UI, right? That's just for the... Um, well, let's see. On mouse.hover item is not there. Basically, it's saying the event is not there for the uh, slots. Let's go to the slots icon. Uh, is this right? Let me try and find it. So, event underscore on mouse start hovering item. Apparently, it's having some problems. So, let's look at the code. What's up with the code? Um, so, it's currently an item event, and I'm assuming item events are fine. Base game event passes in an item. I mean, it's called a hotbar item event in the inspector. Is this event fine? Here we go. Uh, the associated script cannot be found. So if I go game, game events, hotbar item event, that's saying no script, okay? So we've definitely got a problem. So if we go to our events folder, and for example, custom events, we've got a hotbar item event here. What else do we have? Item container, float, bool, base game event, int event, and so on. So I don't see a problem with this. So I'm just gonna say new uh, new item event. Whoops. And just to make sure, as well as having this item event, we want to go to, um, back into Unity, call it. Oh, I feel like the, oh, the problem was that it was called an item event, but the script was called a hotbar item event, okay. So that makes sense. So now it should be fixed, right? Game events, inventory, on start, item event is happy, right? If we go to the icon, it's now happy with its thing. Whoops. So if we save and press play, that should be another bug we fixed. So if I, for example, pick up an item, mouse over it. Uh, ooh, what's happening? The reference script hover info UI is missing from, from what? Let's have a look. Ah, okay, so it's now called an item listener. We must have changed this um, a bit ago. So this is an item listener. And just while we're here, Unity events, Unity item event, okay? See, when you're using mono behaviors, naming matters because it messes up otherwise. So the hover info UI, yep, now listens for an item event. We're listening for um, the start hover event. And on start hover, we'll tell the pop-up to display info. Now we can apply that and fix it. So we should be able to now pick up our items, hover them, and see what the data is about them. There we go. Obviously, it's easy to see full screen. Health potion common does something maybe, max stack five, sell price one, okay? So now that's fixed and it's all happy. 
So I say the last thing to do for this video would be to do the inventory um, up here that stores the slots, right? So the thing is, when we do saving and loading down the line, right? We don't want the UI to do the saving. We want the actual inventory to do the saving because the UI is just representing the inventory, right? The inventory is a physical thing that exists. But the thing is, the hotbar is a bit different because um, there's two ways to do a hotbar, really. We could have the hotbar be a mono behavior on the player that stores what it's referencing and so on. Or we could have the hotbar be just UI based, right? The UI, because um, the hotbar is literally just um, storing references to an inventory, right? That's all it's doing. The hotbar just stores references to items in the inventory or spells or abilities, whatever, right? So if we go to the hotbar slots, would we, we just want to save essentially like maybe an integer, like ID or something for each. Oh yeah, you'll see here as well, hotbar. They're all like, because we've changed the slots to now store, well, they store an inventory, but the inventory is now on the player like so. So if I'd just tested this without setting that, the hotbar should have been broken, but now I've just fixed it. So if we drag, we can still reference things. I can mouse over the hotbar. We have our items here and so on so forth. And now, right, if I just duplicate the player maybe, and I'm gonna say on this player, unpack prefab completely. So now it's just independent of the prefab. I can remove, well, I can have an animator, but let's remove like the movement controller, right? Just He just has an inventory as well, right? So what I can do is I can now have like a separate inventory for him that's different to mine, okay? Um, so even though I'm controlling this player, I'm now gonna make it so the inventory represents his inventory, right? Let, let's give that a go. So I want to, this is gonna be a bit weird. If I press E, it will actually interact from him, right? So it'll interact from me as well. But if I walk over to him and press E, it's now gone into like his inventory, right? So with that, I can actually make like enemies pick up items. Obviously they wouldn't have the same like inter interact key as me. They'd have some code in their state machine saying, walk up to this and interact with it. But now he's got this in his, his inventory, right? Um, if I actually click on him and go into debug mode, I can preview his inventory slots and we'll see in his first slot, he has the item in three of them. Now, if I want to display it on the UI, I need to start again actually. And I need to just say play and select all the inventory slots and drag in player one instead. So now I'm representing someone else's item container. And then, as I said, if I make him pick up the items and we open the inventory, I'm now displaying the uh, UI for his inventory. That's not what you want, but the point is you're allowed to do it now. So your task for this video, for the next for the next video, if you want to do so, it's not actually necessary, but it's probably gonna help you down the line and may maybe I'll do it off camera, uh, put it on the GitHub page. What I want you to do is I want you to make a like inventory UI script that sits on the inventory UI game object. And this is just gonna have a list of inventory slots. And it's going to essentially listen for the event that we've put on these inventory slots. So it's gonna have a void listener listens for this. You can then take them off here. And it's gonna say, um, when the event's called, loop over all of these slots and call dot update UI or whatever it is, right? Um, and then you can do the same for the hotbar. And then that means that if you ever wanted the inventory to represent someone else, then you can do so. You might not even ever need to do that, but it's just good to decouple the code so you're able to do that if you want to do so. It gives you much more options down the line. Um, obviously, I could rush into this and already have like the NPC working by now, but I would probably have loads of duplicate code, loads of copy and pasting, and it just wouldn't be good. So I hope you guys are uh, understanding why I'm taking a bit longer to get through these kind of things and why I'm, you know, being careful with what I'm doing and thinking about things and maybe redoing, refactoring things. Um, but now that we've done this, I could, for example, make this guy be an NPC and make him interactable, make him have his own, own inventory. Obviously he wouldn't update the UI and stuff, but I could obviously do that if I wanted to. And then we can now make a new, we, uh, next video we can make a UI window for the NPC that maybe displays their name and a list of what they can do, whether that's being a vendor, being a, you know, quest giver or whatever. We have a list of all their things. And then I can click on the shop button and then it'll open up both our inventories next to each other. Or as I said, um, an inventory of his items and inventory of my items. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to have like a list of uh, item slots to display the stuff. 
and then when I press buy or sell it swaps the data in them and stuff so we can work on that next uh, episode so I reckon next episode we start doing the UI and writing a bit of the code for it and then we'll probably finish it up in the video after that so then we can actually have vendors with items that we can buy and sell from and obviously we can move on to saving after that um, but saving can come at any point right you don't have to do saving right away but I feel like the earlier you start building a save system the easier it is to go through and make sure you've not forgotten because then whenever you make a new class you can be like does this need to be saved or not so yeah uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one in two days' time. Obviously, social media, all those links are down below. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting the NPC stuff done. If you are, if you are stuck at all or you want to just compare your code to mine, the link to my GitHub page is down below. You can go look for it, the RPG um, tutorial series uh, repo. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. So thanks for watching. See you next time and goodbye.